All right. Uh, what if we raise uh, something that uh, goes against consensus? So we're looking at a lot of people who are poo-pooing the, the exodus of individuals, companies from the likes of places like California, high tax states. Uh, we told you about Hewlett Packard Enterprises, Oracle, uh, Elon Musk, who personally wants to move to Texas over California. Uh, but that, but that, the, the general view is it's not long term going to hurt California because it's such a beautiful place to be. There'll still be population growth. But what if that doesn't happen? If it, if it continues at the pace it's happening, forget about population growth slowing. Population uh, it, itself will be inverting. In other words, they'll be seeking out these lower tax environments like Texas, like Florida. And the big high tax states uh, will suffer immeasurably. And that's Stephen here, Independent Women's Forum, the senior policy analyst. Ethan, remember uh, with us as well, the liberal commentator, radio host. Uh, Inez, what do you think of that? Um, well, I think this is just a capstone on a lot of pressures, particularly in California, my, my former home state here, um, on, on the middle class particularly. And some of those pressures are political. Some of them have to do with taxes and high regulation. Uh, but others of them have to do with, with cultural issues. And then finally, um, in, in recent months, of course, uh, very, very stringent lockdowns in the state of California in comparison to some of the surrounding states, including uh, more difficulty getting schools open. That has a lot of people, especially in the middle class in California, California that's been squeezed for years, um, finally considering to get out. I personally know a bunch of families who are, you know, fourth, fifth generation families in California for the first time are actually considering leaving the state, and some of them have left the state. I mean, th th there is a real movement here. You know what changes it, Ethan? Uh, whatever people personally decide to do because of their own financial circumstances, when their bosses do it for them, when Oracle does it, when you look back at Enterprises does it, and if more companies do that, is, is there a concern that that if scenario becomes reality? Yeah, this is a really big issue, Neil. And you nailed it on the head, really, though, with the companies when they start moving employees. For example, Toyota moved to the Dallas-Fort uh, Worth Metroplex just True. a couple of years ago as well. And employees had the choice to move to Texas or stay here and, and not have a job anymore. Look, it, it is a real concern um, it's not fake news that big companies calculate how the cost of living and taxes affect uh, the, the key employees and that they are. Some of them are leaving. I have a very close friend uh, who himself has just moved out of the state of California and moved his company to Texas. These are real things. However, the answer isn't just to take pot shots at California. We need to look at what is exactly going on. And there's been conversation for 20 years here that there's an over-reliance on income taxes, whether it's personal income taxes or corporate taxes. And we need to shift that away and look at what Prop 13 did to our property tax system and how that actually benefits the 1% who can choose to quickly move to a state like Texas or Florida, like you said, Neil, but still own a house in California and benefit from all of the wonderful things like the beach, the mountains, the snow, the desert, all the great, glorious environment that this uh, state offers. Um, but we've tweaked it in a way that benefits the 1% and the middle class gets carved out. Let's take the focus off of income taxes and shift it where it could be. You might be right about some of that, but I mean, in Proposition 13, that it helped a lot more than just the top 1%. There was a limit on how far they could push you know, real estate taxes up. But you do, right. you do raise a good point when it comes, and Inez, you can help me with this. Uh, he's right to talk about, you know, why are we just picking on California? Well, because we want to pick on New York and New Jersey as well. But I, I, I could joke about it. But to make the point, is there a lesson here that's being lost? Because the reality is these states still have very, very high taxes. And the, the reality is that unless the Senate, you know, switches, uh, you know, Democrat right now, Joe Biden might have difficulty raising taxes on the federal level. But all this is going on at the state level, and more states, like New York, are considering hiking taxes on the wealthy and what have you. So the, the backdrop for, for an incoming Biden administration is uh, all these states raising taxes to balance the books and compounding a recovery uh, problem here. What do you make of that? 
Well, I think the balance is off, right? Um, people were willing to pay very high taxes to live in California, to live in New York, um, because there was a lot to offset that. Of course, there were a lot of um, you know high paying jobs in those areas. Uh, the, the cities um, of California and New York have been in, in themselves attractions, right? There, there's great restaurants, great cultural attractions, you know, museums, the, the city life. People were willing to pay to live in some of these places like San Francisco and New York uh, because of that. Now, now, um, there, there's a couple factors that are, that are sort of rejiggering that balance, right? Um, one, of course, a lot of that stuff is shut down. Um, and, and two, um, even companies that are staying within the area, right now, a lot of people are working from home, and that is allowing them um, to, to move all around the country to perhaps look for uh, a place with a lower cost of living and so on, um, somewhere where their families can be more comfortable. That Those forces are, are not going to immediately go away, especially as most companies are looking at working from home through 2021 that are working from home now. Um, so, and, and I, finally, I just have to say something about Prop 13 as, as sort of a native Californian. I mean, Prop 13, first of all, only caps the rate of increase of the property taxes. California still has quite middle of the road property taxes. It's not like they have extraordinarily low property taxes. And second of all, Prop 13 went into effect because you had a lot of people in their 70s and 80s who had, you know, paid off their home um, when it was worth, you know, a lot less when they bought it, were getting driven out of their homes because of burgeoning real estate in California. Um, so there's a very real problem there. And I find it, I always find it kind of laughable the way that Californians blame Prop 13 for everything, not the massive spending that California has been doing. No, it's the fact that they have this one tax, despite all the other taxes that they have, well, well, let's um, let, are either, you know, ranked number Ethan one, two, three in the country. Answer that. All right, fair, yeah, fair point, but uh, I, I've actually thought this through. I mean, I've been talking about it for 10 years on the radio. Right? It's easy. Prop 13, what you need to do is do like other states. By the way, Inez is a little bit off. California is 35th out of 50 states in terms of the property tax. So it's in the lower third. Um, here's what you need to do with Prop 13. It, it really needs to be abolished immediately. What you do is you triple the property tax rate for it, it, across the board, and then you give a 67 percent deduction for homesteaders, and then you give a 75% deduction for homestead uh, people that are of retirement age. And you solve everything that Prop 13 was supposed to do, and then you make sure that the 1% and the foreign investors who have created this housing crisis in the state of California by owning homes that are empty, uh, you resolve that problem by raising their property taxes dramatically, offsetting a reduction in income tax rates. It, it's actually not that hard to do. Politically, it's very hard to do because of what Inez just put All out right. there. And that's the argument is we, we can't change because of something that was done in the 70s that can be easily addressed. All right, we got to see. I mean, if obviously, something has to be done to make these states attractive that, that are that are currently unattractive. Um, all right, I wish we had more time. Blessedly, we do not. But Inez, I want to thank you. Ethan, I want to thank you. Have a safe, healthy holiday.